Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Premier League Eredivisie review which is kind of late already in the weekend. I know there will be games kicking off with a crazy week coming up so I probably will keep this short. There's anyway, I mean for me I thought initially the big story uh, will be the preview of the Champions League final which didn't tell us anything about the Champions League final, um, except that Chelsea now has beaten uh, Manchester City twice uh, in very short period of time, although Manchester City never played with the full squad, and also that Aguero completely has lost it in many ways. I think the biggest talking point within the Premier League is that Leicester City is now stumbling in the easiest remaining game. They actually managed to lose at home and opening door, the door for most of the others. However, the second romantic choice, West Ham, to make it in the Champions League, also lost. So, um, with Liverpool kind of not being convincing, Spurs also losing uh, continuously. My question is really, who is going to stumble into the Champions League? I give a spot already to Chelsea. I think Chelsea will make it and then the fourth spot. That will be kind of interesting and probably will be the big boys getting in but we'll look at that when time comes so that's the reason why I'm varying Newcastle um, also we had from the Eredivisie yes the classic uh, went to Ajax wearing uh, weird new jer jerseys more than in, in a little bit but the big one is that Arjen Robben played from the beginning and actually was quite instrumental in assisting twice so the big man big old man making a big comeback Let's go to the Premier League. As I said, Leicester City against Newcastle. First of all, why is Newcastle against Leicester not playing in these? In black and white? I really, really, really do not understand. Why do they need to play Neon? Whatever. Uh, Leicester had to play without Evans. And uh, so Albrighton was kind of organizing defense. And they seemed completely disheveled. And Newcastle really hitting them quickly on the counter -hack. Newcastle, a few a month ago, we thought they, they might be going down. And there will be a fight uh, with Fulham. They completely found their route ever since Saint Maxime came back. Um, and they're playing uh, pretty brilliant counter-attacking football. Willock, Dummett, Wilson, twice by the 73rd, it was 4 0 Newcastle. Leicester puts two back, but it's a little bit too late. Albright and Ian Nacho in the 87th, but you know, Newcastle hangs on to that. That win is a big loss for Leicester, who have to play now United. I think they have to play Chelsea and they have another pretty tough game come, 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 come up. So it might be, it might just be that Leicester again falters, although they looked really safe for most of the season to make it into the top four. Uh, Spurs. Was, is one of those where you think they potentially they should actually make it there, but you know, losing at Leeds. Uh, Stuart Dallas in the 13th, son, his son can e e equalize Dele Alli in his best uh, Pirates of the Caribbean look. Um, and then the game was kind of equal. Bamford gives give, give them the lead again. Uh, there have been chances for Spurs, but, but in the end, Leeds puts, puts their way 3 1 through Rodrigo. And um, Leeds continuing to be one of the toughest. Uh, teams to play against. I really made the effort to watch City against Chelsea as good as I could and it has to be said it was a, it was definitely a game of two halves. It was the kind of how to say not so exciting game that I was actually fearing because you know um, both coaches don't want to give away too much and once you saw the lineup for Manchester City where um, you know he plays Sterling he plays Aguero all the players that he's not playing in the big ties at the moment I, I, I knew that Guagua is not not giving anything away and then he placed them in a formation that uh, really doesn't give anything away However, I gotta say that most of the time City were probably a little bit more in control of the, of the game although Chelsea was always uh, dangerous. I think they had a hat trick of offside goals. Werner, all good finishes, but all offside. Um, but then it is uh, City who take 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 this. Um, who um, who came in? I, Cardi from where? Gar Gabriel Jesus plays it back. Aguero with the worst touch of his career. I mean, he had an open goal. He just needs to pull it once and pull it in. Fortunately, he mistouches this and Sterling is there uh, to dust that so and pull it into the, to the net. I, if you've been watching my channel, I've never been that as high on Aguero um, as many others. 
And I think that any big team should stay away from him. He should go to Argentina. I think there he will, he will fit fine. And he showed it all in the penalty that was awarded. In that moment, I really thought that City is going to cruel cruise away with, with the game. Because um, Chelsea was, yes, dangerous here. And there, but, you know, not really convincing. Penalty given just in stoppage time. Aguero uh, tries to do a panenka. And... I was so happy that this, this was safe. To me, the Panenka should be only used in special occasions. It becomes way too common as of late. Way too common. That a goalkeeper can save it by going down and going up again. This was the best thing ever. This was my moment of the weekend in many, in, in many ways. And City had to pay for it. Because Hakim Ziyech, with a really nice shot at 63rd, gets the equalizer. Then, um, yeah, Leilena should have been another uh, penalty for... Uh, City, there was also a Hudson Odoi goal, was, uh, the, was disallowed. I actually think that Raheem Sterling probably should have been sent off for a foul on Werner. That was really, really a rough challenge. Um, and in, in the end, when you think it's 1 1 and you know, no harm, no foul, Alonso stumbles it in across the line and it ends 2 1 Chelsea. Big win for them in the top four race. I, as I said, I am really thinking that Chelsea will get in there. Liverpool uh, thinks to finally, thanks to Masala and Mane combining for the first goal, and then uh, Thiago gets late. The second one, uh, nothing crazy, not exciting or over there, but Liverpool get the win, which puts them back a little bit into the top four race. Um, a United defeat would have sent the title to City and thanks to an individual brilliant effort by Traore who turns around on foot, uh, completely uh, gets Lindelof off balance and yanks it in, uh, then you think this might have happening but in the second half of a penalty by Fernandes Greenwood and uh, Edison Cavani of course turn the game around to make it 3-1 for United. And then probably another huge game between West Ham and Everton. Um, with the first chance of the game, Calvert-Lewin makes it 1-0 and West Ham cannot find a way back, unfortunately. And to me, that means West Ham will not make it into the top four. And now let's hope they make it Europa League. Uh, it would have been such a great story if West Ham makes it into the top, top four. Arsenal uh, sent West Brom down with a 3-1 win with the young guys scoring except for uh, Villian and yesterday evening F uh, Fulham losing at home to Burnley basically settling the second relegation spot as well so Fulham down, West Brom down, Sheffield United down um, that didn't come while watching it last year, it didn't come, come as a big surprise. If you have a look at the table now, we see that uh, Chelsea is more or less into the top four. Leicester and Liverpool for the last spot. Uh, Leicester and Liverpool and a little bit West Ham for the last spot. Leicester is a six-point cushion. Liverpool is a game in hand at United. So give or take, however that game will end, that will go a long way in deciding how... Uh, who will get in there pro probably. I don't think that Leicester will pick up many points, but um, if Liverpool loses to um, United, and as far as I know, although it is squeezed in in a very, very tight, 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 tight window, United will want to play their best squad against Liverpool. Could be a deciding factor. Um, at the moment, it's still Leicester in the top four. Uh, my model with a point ahead, but as, as I said, they're currently standing at 63 points. My model gives them uh, on average 66 points, so there's not much there for Leicester that they will gain because they have a really, really tough program. Um, and as, as I said, on the bottom, everything's uh, clear. West Ham only outside chance uh, is to Everton, uh, but you know, not for Champions League anymore. We have a really weird week that starts today with many, many, many games and I just uh, decided to go round by round and not chronologically because we'll be flipping back and forth. On Thursday, Aston Villa Everton from round 19, that was in January, makeup game. Round 32 makeup game tonight, Tuesday, probably when you see this already, again, Southampton against Chris, Crystal Palace. And then for uh, round 34 on Thursday, we have United against Liverpool uh, squeezed in. 
because we have from round 36 already on Tuesday Man United against Leicester City where what I hear Man United wants to play the uh, reserves. We also have Chelsea, Arsenal on Wednesday. So you see it's all a little bit back, back, back and forth. On the weekend, do we have anything interesting? I have to say honestly not. Uh, there's nothing really that sticks out. I mean, Spurs against Wolves, maybe, but I don't, I don't even think. Newcastle, Man City, if United wins two games, then that might be the game where City uh, will fix the championship. But I think at that time, it will already be done. I think the most exciting ones are actually the United Leicester, then the Chelsea R R Arsenal, then the United against Liverpool, Liverpool matchup. Those, I think, are the, are the ones that, that um, where we have to put our attention uh, to. In the Netherlands, as I said, um, to me the big story is that Arjen Robben makes the comeback to start in, in, in the game and he assists two goals in a big win over Emmen, a local derby, 4-0. He assists the second and the third one uh, through Tagda Cruz. Finally, Arjen Ro Robben is back. Ajax wins against um, Feyenoord wearing Interlake jerseys. Or Gremio, even better. I I like this one so much. I really like this one. I, I, I don't know, a striped Ajax shirt is just, just uh, doesn't look right. I actually would like to see another uh, purely red or a reverse jersey for Ajax, but that would be a third jersey. I think Ajax has been doing really well on the jersey front most of the time. But this one, honestly, I see that some people like it. To me, it is more of a bit of a dis dis disappointment. Uh, the game itself was probably in interesting. Uh, Ajax took the lead through an own, own goal. There was a goal disallowed for Feyenoord. Feyenoord also misses a penalty. Then there are two red cards. One for Ajax just before the half. One in the 60th. And then another own goal uh, set Ajax to on the win. And Kudus in the 79th makes it a 3 0. But honestly, there was not much to play for anymore. Um, AZ winning, PSV winning. So in the table, those two are still fighting for the uh, final Champions League playoff spot. And we have a lot of playoff uh, teams as well. But I think also that is settled between four and seven. We have. Um, yeah, pretty much everything. If you look at specs, and pretty much everything settled uh, within the Netherlands. Maybe re a relegation, but we're not putting that much focus on there. We have the final two rounds this week on Thursday. At the moment, they all played it at the same 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 time. Uh, I think I think Groningen against AZ probably the most interesting one there. And then in the last round, uh, Vitesse Ajax. This was the Cup, Cup final. Vitesse having a great season. AZ against Heracles and PSV against Utrecht. Let's see who will finish in second spot. So that was it from me, from Northwestern Europe in a way. Please let me know what you thought, thought the bar around. I'm sorry that I'm a bit fast with this video, but to be honest, I saw mostly highlights and I really want to get this video quickly done. And I think all the other leaks, there was a little bit more action going on. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!